So hello and welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Franklin Sayer and on behalf of the organizing committee, I'm super excited to welcome you to the Librarians Building Momentum for Reproducibility virtual conference. Uh, just quickly before we get started and as people trickle in, um, here is our schedule for today. Uh, this is the welcome and introduction. In a few minutes, we're gonna have a keynote with Melissa Rethelson, which I'm really excited for. Uh, after that, we're gonna take a short break you will notice we have tried to put a lot of breaks into the day so people have time to get up, move around, get a drink of water, and generally take care of themselves. Um, this is a virtual conference and a fairly long day, so please make sure to eat, get up, um, move around a little bit uh, throughout the day. Um, then we're gonna have our first session of talks. Uh, that'll be followed by another break. Then we're gonna have our breakout activity, and that takes place at 1140 Pacific or at 2.40 Eastern time. Uh, due to limitations in Zoom, we're going to have you exit this Zoom meeting and enter a new Zoom meeting for the breakout activity. The link for this new Zoom meeting is on the program website. Don't really worry about this too much right now. We'll give directions again later on and when the time comes. Um, but importantly, you're gonna to wanna to come back to this Zoom meeting after the breakout activity, because uh, that's where we'll have the rest of the sessions for the day. We will then have another round of sessions, uh, and then we're gonna wrap up with a couple lightning talks and some brief closing remarks. Uh, so I wanna talk just for a moment about how this conference came about, because this isn't really like most conferences, at least that I've been involved in. Um, it's virtual, totally free, and instead of being organized by an existing professional association or academic institution, it was put together by an ad hoc group of librarians who work on issues around reproducibility. Basically, we knew that librarians and other information professionals had a tremendous amount of expertise about reproducibility. And over the last couple of years, we've watched as at first a few people started talking about how libraries could support reproducible research to in the last year or so, starting to see reproducibility being built into people's job descriptions and titles, toll services and libraries being organized around supporting reproducible research. And in September, I'd attended a workshop I helped organize at the National Academies of Science on reproducibility and transparent reporting, where really one of my main takeaways was that librarians were in many ways uh, far ahead of others in the academic community in terms of thinking about how to deliver services, especially around scholarly communication, data management and sharing, reporting guidelines, uh, and other areas. And I think this was especially true in thinking about uh, how we could implement solutions in practical ways within our institutions and at scale. But we also felt that this uh, expertise wasn't always being reflected at existing conferences and professional organizations. Uh, it wasn't always being made visible. And in part, this is maybe because supporting reproducible research, and don't worry, these terms will be defined shortly, requires a big tent and a lot of collaboration. It would be hard to fit a program into an existing conference that would cover everything from pre-registering studies to teaching undergraduates, to using containers for computational pipelines, uh, to reproducibility and historical primary documents, which are just some of the presentations we have today. So that's the idea for this conference came about originally as a tweet in October, 2019. Uh, and the idea being is could we host an entirely free virtual conference on this topic to bring together all the different people we knew were working in this area and provide them with an opportunity uh, to talk about their expertise and for new people to learn about what they were doing and what they could do. Uh, and I think the response really demonstrates that both the expertise and the momentum definitely exists. You can see from our program the depth and breadth um, of expertise that librarians have on reproducibility. I should mention that we had almost 30 proposals and it was very difficult to narrow that down to a set that fit within our schedule for a reasonably linked uh, length of a day. And incredibly over 300 people have registered, um, which again, I think really shows the interest and, and momentum that this topic already has. Uh, so what do we hope this conference achieves? Uh, well, first we hope this conference helps build more of a community around reproducibility. We hope you learn uh, about what others are doing and maybe get an idea for how you can do the same at your institution. Uh, second, we wanna highlight some of the great work being done by many of our colleagues. And I think this program really does that. And finally, we want to encourage people who aren't currently involved in supporting reproducibility to first recognize the work that they already do that supports reproducible research, because I think in many cases, the services your library already provides are already supporting reproducible research. And second, consider some new ways that you could engage with these topics. 
Uh, some details for today uh, before we get started. Everything you need, including documents and links, is on the program page of the website. Uh, there is a code of conduct. Basically, be good to each other. Um, if there are any issues, please contact any of the organizers. There's also a forum on the website for anonymously reporting any issues. Uh, there's an OSF instance for supporting materials and presentations. Slides and videos will be posted. This may take a few days or weeks. Uh, we'll probably send out an email to all attendees with this link again later on. Technical support is available. Uh, Casey Hampsey um, is available via email or chat, and you can chat with any of the organizers and we'll be happy to help you. Uh, use the chat feature in Zoom to ask questions of the presenters. Um, there will be time for questions after the keynote and at the end of each session. Uh, I suggest you wait to type your questions towards the end um, of the sessions, just in case they get lost in a stream of comments um, and if there's technical issues. There's a shared note-taking document uh, that is also linked from the program website. Uh, it's a shared Google document that's opening for editing. Uh, this is kind of a chaos document, but please try to use it. Our hope is it becomes a useful record of the day. There will be a breakout activity. As I said earlier, uh, due to limitations in Zoom, this will take place in a separate Zoom meeting that's linked on the program website. Uh, you'll basically leave this room and go to that room during the activity and then come back to this room for the rest of the day. We also have a hashtag, ReproLibs, uh, so please use that when you're tweeting about this. And finally, a note about the format for today, please be patient. Um, we've never done this before. I don't think we even know anyone who's done this before. Um, things will almost certainly go wrong. Um, so report issues in the chat, be patient with any errors, they will get solved. If somehow everything completely fails, um, try signing out and back into the Zoom meeting. Just before we get started, I also want to thank the rest of the organizing committee, Tisha, Shirley, Vicky, and Amy. The idea for this conference came about on October 3rd. So in less than four months, we went from a tweet to a full conference. This wouldn't be possible without the work of this group. Uh, and it's been a great pleasure working with all of them. Uh, they are also some of the people that you can reach out to via the chat if any issues arise or you need to report anything um, else.